I love the voice of Zoom, like the recording and progress voice. It's, <laughs> it's so yeah. automated. But I'm, I'm going to say right off the bat, your story from yesterday, was that from Travelers? Is that Ethan Hawke at the desk? Uh, yeah, uh, Explorers. Yeah, yeah. Explorers, yes. Explorers, yes. <laughs> yeah, I watched that movie a lot when I was a kid, so I wanted to try to like recreate that scene. <laughs> and, and the vintage garbage can spaceship, I mean... yeah. Come on, that's totally, that's totally like not feasible. Like <laughs> it was <laughs> kind of crusty, but like it was a super fun movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, welcome to Studio 29. You are our first long distance Zoom slash podcast guest. So thank you so much. And I'm so stoked because I am a huge fan of your work. And in many ways, you are actually an inspiration to what I've done in film and to you know essentially create a kit setup and ideas on lights and and micro four thirds cameras and full frame cameras and nikon or olympus or you know lumix all that kind of thing so it's awesome to have a chance to join so welcome to the channel and you know i guess it's kind of cliche but like how did you get started in this amazing world of video which you now have an awesome youtube channel with yeah, well, thanks, Stephen. Uh, it's really cool being on your podcast. I feel like we've been internet friends for like the longest time, so it's exactly, kind of cool yeah. to like talk to you to <laughs> you know talk to you face to face. But yeah, I kind of I got my start with video when I was pretty young. I started like a lot of other filmmakers start. They start filming skateboarding, and that's like a big part of my life still. So I started filming skateboarding, and um, I started meeting a bunch of other skate filmers, and just before. Um, I mean, I don't know if this is like jumping too far ahead, but like just before I was deciding to go to like film school, uh, one of the skate filmers that I was friends with, he and one of his buddies was starting this this YouTube channel. And I think now like the YouTube channel is like huge. It has like over 3 million subscribers, but they were wow. starting this YouTube channel back in uh, 2012. And just before I was going to go to film school, they asked me if I wanted to intern with them. And so they said I had a day to decide. And so I was like, okay, I'm not going to go to film school. I'm just going to go down to actually Houston, Texas is where they were, they were working from. And so I flew down there and I stayed with them for a few months and we traveled all over um, LA and filmed with a bunch of like big YouTubers. Cause their whole thing was they had phantom cameras, uh, phantom slow motion cameras. So um, they basically used that as like a way to get in with all like these big YouTubers doing like all like these slow motion videos. And so I was kind of like their production assistant slash intern slash you know, assistant camera operator or whatever. Uh, so I did that for a few months and I got to meet like a bunch of big YouTubers like Zach King uh, from Final Cut King. Um, who else? I met a lot of like really big uh, uh, skateboarders in the industry. Um, we, we filmed with like the Powell Peralta team, if you're familiar. And then I think another one was uh, Jack's Films. He's like a comedian YouTuber. Uh, but yeah, I got to meet a bunch of big YouTubers and I kind of saw how being a YouTuber was feasible even back in 2012. So that's what kind of like, I don't know, it kind of like inspired me to like want to start my own YouTube channel. That's wild. Yeah. I mean, I was a huge fan yeah. of Tony Hawk and all the you know, skateboarding growing up. I was never a good skateboarder. I dabbled in it, but my, you know, I don't know, my balance was not very good. So, I mean, seeing some of the amazing work obviously with channels and, and being able to kind of get that, you know, used to equipment, that you often see with yeah. skateboarding videos. Do you still do um, any like professional work recording skateboarding companies or skateboarding channels or that sort of, you know, artists who do skateboarding as a living? Honestly, like, like ever since I was a kid, that was always my dream was to be like a staff filmer for like a big skate company. Uh, but I found out really quickly that like, you know, unless you do get a staff job, you can't really make that much money filming skateboarding. So I kind of... I fell away from filming skateboarding for the longest time because there just wasn't any money in it. And I went into like weddings and stuff that would actually pay you. Uh, and so I feel like now, now that I have a YouTube channel where I can kind of like just basically do whatever I want, I want to start making more like skate videos and kind of get back to my roots. But I haven't done very much like professional work in skateboarding probably since I was, you know, an intern for that, for that YouTube channel back in 2012. Uh, it's been mostly, mostly weddings. I did work for a, a nonprofit skate ministry for a while. And I made like, you know, some goofy little skate videos for them, but nothing on like the professional level, probably in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, it's a really cool industry seeing it even in Toronto here, there's a big skateboarding community too. 
Um, oh, yeah. And we have some awesome like urban areas for skateboarding, especially downtown underneath the. And have you been to Toronto? Have you been out? To, out I east? haven't. No. Oh, you, you gotta come. This is like the land of yeah. YouTubers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I. Yeah, I feel like like all the big all the big people live over in that uh that part of canada i feel like <laughs> yeah yeah i guess the maddie hapoyas and the peter mckinnons yeah. and such yeah they're all out, out east i didn't realize that but um yeah. but yeah like the skate scene here is really cool um and so yeah. like i said i'm not really a skateboarder myself these days but huge yeah. huge mad respect for what you did with uh, and still do with skateboarding um and it, yeah, it's interesting you. seeing like the the style of video that comes from it, because I guess that kind of inspired what you do with video because it's very kind of DIY. It's a lot of, you know, kind of handheld running gun style shooting, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And I feel like, you know, like most skateboarders probably like, I feel like a lot of skate filmers, like specifically, they don't have a lot of like filmmaker cinematographer type knowledge. And so when they need to get something done, they don't think, Oh, I'm going to buy a slider. They think, I'm going to like build a dolly with like with, you know, pieces of skateboards that I have or whatever, you know, like, so it's kind of, yeah, that definitely feeds into it for sure. That's wild. Yeah. I'm guessing you built yourself a dolly using extra wheels and such off of boards. Oh yeah. No, I've, I mean like back in the day I would build like a DIY dollies and I'd even, you know, try to build some sliders out of, uh, skateboard bearings and stuff like that. Um, I, like I think one of the first videos I posted on my channel, I don't know if I have it unlisted or not, but it's all about like this oh, DIY. You got to share that. that. You got to put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, it's all about like, you know, like PVC pipe and like skateboard bearings or whatever. It actually worked pretty well, but it was definitely not a very professional looking piece of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really cool. I mean, you should think about creating like a side hustle and like your own brand for skateboarding, you know, equipment yeah. and that sort of thing too right there might be a market still for like making better skate handles for cameras because i feel like there was this one guy named jason hernandez who's like one of like the most famous uh, skate filmers out there but he actually started a company where he made like handles for your dslr that would like actually make it feel like it was an old vx 1000 or oh GH wow or a GL2 or whatever. So like it actually like, it was like weighted correctly, which uh, like a lot of skateboarders kind of miss once the whole DSLR uh, revolution started. And it's kind of funny that like a lot of people are still, you know, shooting with those VX 1000s just because not necessarily like the video looks that good, but it's just like, it's just a feeling with that camera that like you just film skateboarding a lot better. So. Yeah. And like also the weight yeah. they have and that kind of heft behind it, it's more, I mean, not to say DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are not, you know, sturdy, but they don't have that same kind of yeah. rugged factor you have with the old cameras. So yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Wow. That's wild. Well, I mean, in terms of DIY, I mean, you've done pretty much everything with the DIY kind of development with videographers. And so like yeah. your channel started in 2012 and I mean, looking at your channel now, you have like a hundred and 35,000 subscribers, which as a YouTuber myself, I'm like, wow, that's incredible to see that kind of, uh, you know, a, I guess, retention of audience as well as the continual mm -hmm. growth of creating videos. Um, I mean, that's one thing too, I think YouTubers don't know, like the idea of maintaining a channel and not burning out and also keeping your content yeah. unique and crisp. Like how do you, how do you keep everything fresh and how do you keep it new and reinvent ideas, especially when it comes to lighting or like I saw your recent video too, but it's still mm -hmm. unique perspectives on something that may have been talked about in the past, but still comes out as a new video. H how do you do that? Yeah. Well, I feel like that's kind of like something that I struggled with for like the longest time was that like, I felt like I had to make, videos that haven't already been made but that's really not the case because every video has been made like even the video that i just put out i'm sure that there's other videos about how to light scenes with tube lights but i feel like there's there's a unique voice for everybody so like the way that i explain something might resonate with some people and it might not and that's what i kind of try to encourage other youtuber or you know like other you know aspiring youtubers with mm -hmm. is that like you might want to share the exact same like the exact same information as I do but you can do it in a completely different way and you have a completely different voice like I remember when my like that one video blew up that has like three you know, like three million views now or something like that like when that blew up there was a bunch of people making that exact video like even doing the little snap that I did like but they're making <laughs> the exact same video and what I tried to encourage them with is like go for it like make the exact same video but like 
if you just say word for word what I said, it's not really going to be like, what's the point of making it? Like mm-hmm. if you can make the same type of video, but just explain it in, a, in like a slightly different way totally. or like just, you know, talk about it in the way that it makes sense to you. I feel like there's a lot of YouTubers out there that like do educational or like entertainment type stuff that just doesn't resonate with me that well. But then there are some that really resonate with me. And so it's like, there's a bunch of different types of people out there and everybody learns and enjoys different things. So I feel like there's always room for anyone to make, you know, especially educational content because like everybody learns differently and not mm-hmm. everybody is going to enjoy the type of like educational stuff that I do, but I've found a little bit of an audience that like it resonates with. So, and it's, it's really cool too. I think, I think as a videographer, like we kind of get known for doing certain kind of styles of shooting. Um, and one thing I've always really admired with your shots is that you are like the king of the wide shot. Like you do a lot of wide, you're not scared of, you know, making sure we have bokeh and depth of field and all that crap. You go for a very clean, but tells the story, um, you know, both in your, your van shots in the woods. I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of your videos, man. So, I mean, they're, they're really yeah. good. <laughs> the idea of being able to have that confidence and knowing that you don't necessarily have to jump into a really high focal length shot. And, you know, is that what you'd say is kind of like a style of shooting that you like to do? I feel like for the longest time and I feel like everyone can kind of like resonate with this when we all got DSLRs all we wanted to do was put the 50 millimeter f1.8 and just blow everything out in the background (laughs) and just get all like that really creamy bokeh but that isn't necessarily like what every shot calls for and so I feel like you know there have been like a lot of like uh movies that I've watched that I've noticed that like you know you don't necessarily need everything at like f1.4 all the time and like you know like Wes Anderson films for example I watch them a lot just because you know they're not all great but I really love uh uh, Robert Yeoman's cinematography in those videos because it's just like you know they're shooting with you know like super 16 cameras and you know apertures that are probably like in full frame terms, probably only giving you the bokeh of like an F 3.5, but their stuff still looks amazing. So I'm like, why does it look so good? It's like, well, it's the composition and the lighting. So it's like, if I can focus on the composition and the lighting, like the most, then it won't matter if I'm shooting at an F 2.8 on my four thirds or, you know, an F 1.4, my stuff can still look good. So, and I feel like it's also just kind of, especially with like the micro four thirds sensor, like I always try to not make it look like it's shot with a small sensor. Like I want it to look big. So sometimes just, you know, shooting wide and not necessarily focusing so much on trying to fool people that it's a bigger sensor. I'll just like try to, I guess, frame it and light it as if it's just a normal camera. And I feel like that kind of like hopefully bleeds into my work where it's just not, you know, like blazingly apparent that I have a cheaper or, you know, inferior camera i guess no i mean the way you've made the um especially the the g85 the lumix camera that um i i i took that camera to scotland with me a couple of years back and i don't have that camera anymore i think i sold it but i miss that camera like it was a good yeah. camera it's an awesome sensor uh regardless you know a full frame micro four there's all that kind of crap it's mm-hmm. it's just it's a beautiful result for a really economical price and it's yeah. interesting to see like when you shot with it too using that especially for some of your van shots there was always it never felt the way you color graded it like it, i think it's only 8 bit for for depth yeah. but it yeah. looks like 10 bit yeah and i feel like that's something that like a lot of people they they might not really see you know panasonic as like you know like the best you know color science out there but i've actually found that most panasonic cameras actually give pretty pleasing results and i've kind of especially on 8-bit cameras i've kind of like leaned into like what the camera wants to look like so like instead of shooting in like the most flat you know picture profile i'll just you know like on the g85 i shot in cine v a lot and i just i really liked how that looked so like and i like barely touched it i would just fix the skin tones if i needed to but i mean i even just I missed my GH3 so much that I actually picked up another one on eBay. Um, no, and how much sure you pay for that? It. How much? What did you get it for? Uh, I got it for two hundred bucks, and it came with a lens, which is like the lens itself costs two hundred bucks. So I was like, I could just sell the lens, and the camera will be free. <laughs> wow, that's nuts. I mean, the GH3. Yeah. You use the GH4 for most of your stuff that I saw in the past, right? Was it GH4 or GH3? So it was the GH3 for the longest time. I think I used it for like. I mean, off and on for like seven years. Cause I just felt like the GH3, 
even back when it was first released, it was pretty revolutionary. And I feel like a lot of people kind of like, you know, like wrote it off because it wasn't the GH2. Like the GH2 was great too, but like the GH3 had headphone jack, weather sealing, an all eye uh, codec. Uh, you know, it shot just as good in 60, you know, 60p at 1080 as it did in 24 and 1080. So like, it still is like a really good looking camera. Using it now in comparison to my, my EM1 Mark II that I have, like, it doesn't really hold up. Like my M1 Mark II is like probably like, the, like my favorite camera that I've owned so far, but it's still, I mean, for 200 bucks, you can't really, you know, you can't really go wrong with a GH3. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing too, but your channel I've always admired is being able to get the maximum, you know, results f from cameras that don't cost as much as like, you know, red cameras or all the stuff that you sometimes see a lot of YouTubers are now, you know, shooting on even like, I mean, we shoot in the Canon C70 for our workflow. And then sometimes you go to a shoot and it's like, oh, that's a B cam or oh, that's a C cam. But for yeah. us, it's like an A cam. So it's like, yeah. it's interesting seeing you don't have to have that kind of camera to get that result. Do, do you yeah. shoot with a, a secondary shooter for your gigs? Or are you more of a solo shooter? Or what, what do you do with, yeah, the, with the workflow? Yeah, like I... I basically just shoot everything myself. Uh, when I was in Oregon, I had, you know, some friends that would come out, you know, and, you know, sometimes help me shoot with stuff, but yeah, like 98% of the time, I'm just like shooting all by myself. Um, I made some friends here in Texas and I even just worked on a little commercial shoot yesterday with a buddy of mine. He's, uh, he's helping me make this little, uh, coffee commercial, but yeah, I shoot like 90% of the stuff myself. I've been thinking about, you know, eventually, you know, starting to hire someone to shoot like some BTS of me just because I'm not very good at like vlogging and like, you know, having to set up my <laughs> BTS cam while I'm actually trying to like make, you know, the actual content is a little bit, is a little bit cumbersome, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Most of it's just me. Wow. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I have my second shooter, Eric, who's in New York city right now. He also shares this channel with me. So, uh, Eric says to say hello, by the way, and he wishes he was oh. here, but he's back tomorrow, but we'll do a, we'll yeah. do a, we'll do an episode again in the future and we'll, we'll check in. But, uh, he yeah. does, um, uh, like he, we kind of like think wide and, and close between the two of us. So we yeah. always just hand off, you know, the, you know, the next set of style of shooting in a, in a, a shot list or whatever else to the other shooter. So I mean, mad respect for being able to do both because that really keeps it really nimble run and gun. And then, you know, you kind of get the full DP mindset of what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, I mean, like, so you now you're doing, uh, I saw one, one YouTube video where you did a, a kind of feature on a board being made too. Are you kind of getting yeah. into that like style of creation of products per se, like a commercial style of video too? Yeah. Well, like my whole idea right now is, you know, I don't necessarily know if I'm going to be a YouTuber for, you know, the next 10 years. So what I've what I've really been wanting to do is, you know, to create a catalog of videos that I'm like proud of that I can just, you know, like live on my website. And so that's kind of like, you know, I figure I can, you know, for like these, these small businesses or, you know, like these, these artists, I can make, you know, like videos for them. So it benefits them, but it also can benefit me if I'm like using it as a way to like, you know, promote myself as like a commercial cinematographer. So, um, you know, even this, uh, this commercial that I filmed yesterday, like I'm going to, you know, like post it on my website as if it's an actual commercial. So, you know, technically it would be like a spec ad, but, um, you know, it's for a coffee company that I already like, and they don't have a video that like represents them well yet. So I can make something that like looks really good, you know, and it's, it's good for me because I can use it as a way to like, you know, reach out to other coffee companies and say, Hey, look, I made this for you. Or, you know, I made this for, for this guy, I can make it for you as well. Um, so that's kind of what I want to start doing. And, you know, I've been reaching out to, you know, small businesses and, you know, like artists and stuff like that. Cause that's where I really want to hopefully steer myself is where I can like make YouTube videos about the, like the professional gigs that I've been doing and hopefully still do it with, you know, budget gear. Cause I still feel like, the budget gear that I use, it still looks really good in my opinion. And like, if I can keep making great stuff, like professionally with, you know, w w with cameras that don't necessarily cost a fortune, I think that would be, you know, a good way to direct my, my YouTube channel, I guess. Yeah. I, I'm so guilty of always looking at the next product that comes out and being like, Oh, that, that will make everything just so much better. But, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I'm trying to now break that mindset, uh, especially when, yeah, you, it's hard. You know, when you run a business, you have to make sure you're, you know, yeah. ma maintaining overhead and such. So it's like to, to do the, uh, 
to do the regular DJI release route, which you, know, you can ask, you know, Janica, who this channel started with, we used to laugh back and forth because of the idea that, you know, he was Sony and I was Lumix, but I was always a fanboy of what's coming out next. So the same thing yeah. now with Eric, who I share the studio with, um, you know, he shoots on Canon. Uh, so he kind of got me onto the Canon C70, but everything else I do in the Lumix S5, that's kind of, you know, and, and even seeing I like if I go camera. off and do, oh, it's, it's an awesome camera. And like, yeah. if you're taking it for a shoot with like a realtor shoot or, or doing, you know, anything that's like a quick shoot for the day, it's just so much faster setting it up. It's, you know, the results are great. It has, yeah. you know, IBIS built in, you don't need to make a rig. You don't have to bring any kind of apparatus to support it. It's just, you know, yeah. out about you go. Yeah, it's great. You know, I've said this before, but like, if I wasn't a YouTuber, I would probably be like on a C70 or on a FX3 or something like that. Uh, I feel like like where my channel is, it's I've kind of, you know, built it around being like a yeah, a DIY low budget, you know, like a filmmaker, but like I've always found that it's just really satisfying and really fun being able to create something that looks good with like, you know, stuff that doesn't really cost that much. I've always kind of, you know, felt like you know, sometimes it's more impressive if you see, you know, someone like me, you know, like 511 dunk as opposed to seeing someone who's, you know, seven feet tall dunk, you know, like totally. you're going to be a lot more impressed if I can dunk cause I'm not that tall, but like, you know, the seven foot tall, you know, person could probably dunk pretty easily. And I feel like it's the same thing with cameras. Like if I got an FX six, it should look good, you know, like yeah. it should look amazing. But if I can make a GH three look amazing, then it's like a little bit more where it's like, okay, well, Nigel's good at using a camera. It's not necessarily the camera, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but... <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I mean, where do you see your channel going? I mean, like at YouTube as an app, I mean, we all seen kind mm -hmm. of like the fall of Instagram as kind of yeah doing whatever it's doing now. But like, it's sad, obviously, living in the world of TikTok and seeing vertical videos are now taking off. And when you work oh with clients, gosh, they yeah. just, you know, they just want it. And it's, it's so yeah. freaking annoying that you just have to think about, okay, I'm going to do this or crop down to whatever so you're happy yeah but um i mean what do you think youtube's gonna do in the next like five years i mean honestly i really don't know i mean i'm always kind of with the mindset of like you know youtube probably isn't going anywhere like whether it becomes the next tiktok which i really hope it's not um like it's still gonna be there but i've always thought that like like my whole channel is hopefully kind of like a like a journey with me of like trying to become a better filmmaker, trying to become a better cinematographer. So even if for some reason YouTube got deleted tomorrow, I would still have a bunch of skills under my belt. And hopefully the people that watched me will have skills under their belt too, so where they can actually like monetize this, this skill that they have now. And so that's where I've always kind of had my mindset in where it's just like, if YouTube's gone tomorrow, I'm going back to freelancing, you know? And that's like, I hope that's not it because you know, I've been doing YouTube full time for almost three years now. I started in March of 2020 where I just quit my day job and I've just been doing YouTube. But like, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing, you know, YouTube for the rest of my life. I love doing it. Like, it's like the funnest job that I've ever had. I basically just do whatever I want and make the kind of, you know, content that I want to make. So it's not that I'm like ungrateful of being a YouTuber, but it's definitely like, I'm not going to, you know, I guess, you know, bet my entire life on YouTube that I'm just going to be doing this for the rest of my life. I mean, even now, like it's, you know, I've had highs and lows in my channel right now. I kind of feel like I'm at a little bit of a lull in like my views yet. Um, and part of it could just be like the subject matter that I want to make versus what I should be making. But <laughs> that's maybe a, a subject for another You mean podcast, it's not a new but... product release from DJI that you're going to cover next? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's just, I mean, like, I, th I feel like I mentioned this on like uh, my podcast a few weeks ago, but it's like, I could probably, I mean, if you really wanted to make it as like a filmmaker YouTuber, I feel like the best way to go is just buy the latest and greatest thing, mm -hmm. review it and then return it, you know, like, yeah, people just, do. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah, just keep on that cycle. And it's like, that's all fine and dandy, but that's just, I mean, if I had to do that, I feel like I would just get like one really stressed and then kind of like burnt out really quickly. Cause I would just be on like this constant like cycle of like having to buy the newest thing and then give somewhat of a conclusive review, even though like, I can't even like, I've only just recently, you know, been able to like 
you know, create a little, uh, you know, like video guide pamphlet to sell on my website about the EM1 Mark II. And I've had it for almost a year now, you know, it's like, I've only just recently like figured out this camera and I can't imagine like, you know, getting, you know, the a seven S four when it comes out in a couple of years and having it for a week and then trying to do a conclusive review on it. Cause it's just like, it's just not enough time. A hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's so strange too with YouTube because like I, my channel just got to 5,000 subscribers and I've been so lazy on it because no, thanks man. I've, I've been so lazy though. Like the the sweet (laughs) sauce is doing it per week or whatever. Right. But, um, yeah. with me, I've been like, you know, got busy with work and then I know I should be making a video per week. Cause I also have, you know, people who want to sponsor whatever with the channel, but like yeah. we went to, what was it? California last year. And I went to Disneyland because, you know, my wife and I are nerds and, uh, we were there at that star Wars, you know, galaxy's edge location. So I shot a YouTube short of me making a lightsaber and then talked about it at my studio. And I got back being like, whatever, I'll put it together and throw it out there. That video has like, I don't know, 800,000 views. It's the most watched thing. It's crazy. But, yeah. but, 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 but if you have monetization, which we do in our channels, I think it equated to like 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is like, that's not, you know, if it's going, if it's going that way, 800,000 views, like on, I made a video once on a, a I think DJ Osmo action when I first came out and I got like yeah. 250,000 views or whatever it was that made me like at least, you know, two or 300 bucks. But, uh, yeah. when it comes to like a short, you know, that gets that much views or that many views part of me and you're getting, you know, that kind of results, it's, eh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like YouTube shorts are still, um, I don't know. They're still just not doing it for me. I don't really think I'll be making any for the foreseeable future. I've been doing TikToks a little bit, but like as a viewer of YouTube, I always get annoyed when there's too many shorts in my subscription oh, yeah. feed. So mm-hmm. I don't want to add to that for my subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like as we're, I'm running out of time here on my Zoom because I don't have the membership for it. One, th- one quick thing yeah, too. Yeah. I've always admired the fact that you film with your wife. So like if you're ever like yeah. doing that kind of like idea of shooting when you're traveling or whatever else, like Ange and I, mm-hmm. my wife, she's, you know, we always do that. If you go anywhere, it's like out comes yeah. the camera and let's make a cinematic short. So, you know, that's yeah. really cool that you guys have uh, a chance to do that. Do you, does she also work in film? Uh, does she work in, in video <laughs> as well? No, actually, uh, yeah, she's not really into film or video or photo at all. She kind of like, she, would, she wouldn't say like she do it, like I wouldn't say she does it reluctantly with me, but like, you know, sometimes especially when we first got married, I was putting her in front of my camera all the time just because <laughs> it's a lot easier to like light mm-hmm. somebody else or, you know, frame somebody else than it is to frame yourself. So, uh, yeah, she, you know, she's a good sport and she'll go in front of my camera when I need her to, but you know, she's always just like, you know, suggesting like, Hey, you should find somebody else. I don't, you know, like, <laughs> like I've been in like, you know, 30 of your videos already or whatever, you know? But I mean, like I always like putting her in there cause it's, it's fun. Yeah, I mean, if you're if yeah. any videographer out there looking to kind of have an actor or a stand-in for your film, always talk to your partner or friend because I mean that kind of yeah. that kind of gets the job done. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, like I probably should wrap it up because I don't want our call to end because we only have like oh, yeah, seven yeah. minutes <laughs> left. But I mean, thank you so much for coming on to this podcast and 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 sharing your journey, Nigel. It's a pleasure watching what you're doing and and also maintaining that level of high quality content and, and teaching so many creatives to utilize the tools they have instead of running out and spending way too much money. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Steven. It's been really, uh, it's been really cool being able to talk to you like for the first time and just being on your podcast. It's really awesome. I think you're doing a great job on YouTube, by the way, too. I know it's, you know, it might not seem like, I don't know, like the views equate to like the amount of effort that you're putting into it. But I mean, if you just keep keep at it. Like, I mean, I've been at this for, you know, 12 years and it finally did pay off at one point. So like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that it's going to take you that long because you're doing way better stuff than what I was doing uh. when I first started. <laughs> well, you've like, already made, you've already you're... made the roadmap of how to get there. Cause like lighting and yeah, such, yeah. like I was a noob when I first began to do any of this. So yeah, I mean, yeah. it's really cool and inspiring, especially now, even in like recession economy and being able to kind of save money where you can, you know, if you can yeah. do what you get with results on a GH3 for 200 bucks, I mean, yeah. learn the camera. Wow. That's, that's, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, I, I'm going to say, you know, thank you. And, uh, definitely let's, uh, let's keep this, uh, you know, idea collaboration in touch. If you're in Toronto, Absolutely. uh, let, let me know. I mean, it's a great city to yeah. shoot in. It's got an awesome scene for video and there's so yeah. many creatives out here too. 
Yeah, I mean, like right back at you. If you ever find yourself in in Dallas or in Oregon, because I'm probably going to be moving back there eventually. But oh, if you're ever are you going to go back? Is that the plan now, or are you staying in Texas? I think so. I think so. It's really hard because I mean, you're from Vancouver, right? So it's like it's really it's such a different climate, a different landscape here that like it's just really hard for me to get used to. Like I just. I'm so used to the mountains that like, I kind of want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, the West Coast, I mean, uh, sorry to all the East Coasters out there, but the West Coast is the best coast. Um, yeah, and I, like, I just, definitely it, agree. Oregon's beautiful. Like I've been to Oregon, yeah. I haven't been there in years, but I, like, oh my God, that coastline is so gorgeous and so cinematic, if yeah. you can say that cliche. Yeah. No, no, I mean, you can, put your, like, you can point your camera anywhere there and it just looks amazing. And it's just not to throw shade at any, you know, Texans, but it's just, it's just not the same here. And I just can't, you know, especially here in Dallas. I mean, Texas is huge. It's like, you know, it's an enormous state. So it's really hard to like judge one small part of it by the entire, you know, but. If, if you go back to Oregon, would you ever get into drones? I don't, I don't think I've seen many drone videos on your channel. Uh, maybe. Um, I'm always kind of wary because like, I know I have to do like that drone pilot license or whatever if I was going to do it for my YouTube channel. So it's like, I'm just kind of lazy in that aspect where it's just like, I could, you know, if I ever needed it for like a paid shoot, I have so many friends in Oregon who are drone pilots and they're way better than me. So I just, I just pay them to like, you know, do my drone shots for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Droning is fun, but it's, it is a bit of a fun setup. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, man, I, I wish you all the best and uh, stoked to see what comes next in your channel. Awesome. Thanks so much, Steven. Ciao. Awesome.